This chapter is all about selection. And I think that's kind of an important skill when you think about it. If you've ever taken my classes on Photoshop, you know how I feel about selection when it comes to Photoshop. I think it's one of the most important skills you will ever develop in that program. You have to be able to select. Now, selection in a vector program, we call it object-oriented, is obviously different because you're dealing with vector objects. It's easier to select them, but still there are some tricks here I think we can play around with. Now, in this first lesson, what we're going to do is discuss just this one right here. That is your basic vanilla click it and you got it selection tool. If I select that tool and come over here, incidentally I have the image selection magic open. It is in your working folder if you want to play around. If I come over here and click on this face, it selects the face. Now notice something that happened. It became selected. It shows me it's selected. There's a bounding box around it. The bounding box allows me to go into it and, well, make him uh, larger. I could rotate and do a lot of different things once you have it selected. Let me undo. I love undo. If you don't see that box, it's possible you might not, even though it is the default. I want you to go up to the word view on the pull-down menu and go down to show bounding box. Mine says hide. If I turn that off, as you can see, that goes away. If you don't have it, some people don't like to use it. If you don't have the bounding box around it, the way you change the shape is to use the tools that are over here. We'll talk about those later. But let's go ahead and turn that back on since that is a default. Show bounding box. Okay, there you go. Now, once we have it selected, we can delete it, move it, rechange it, paint it, whatever we want to do. But we do have some options that we can use, preferences, to help set up selection. So if you're on a Macintosh, go to the word Illustrator. If you're on Windows, go to the word Edit and go into Preferences and go over to Selection and Anchor Display. Inside here, we have several things. Number one, tolerance. What's that? Tolerance is how close you are to an anchor point before Illustrator informs you you're there. Let me show you that. Now notice my cursor. In Adobe Illustrator, there must be over 100 ways that that cursor can look. It's talking to you. It's telling you now you've got a selection tool. But if I come over to a shape, notice how it gets that black box? That means if you click, you're going to get that shape. But it does change. If I come over to the path and run up it just a little bit, watch what happens eventually. See it turn white? Actually, it's going hollow. Basically, it means I am over an anchor point. Now, if we go back into Illustrator Preferences, we can change that. Now, I leave that at 3 when I'm teaching because it's the default setting. But I like to put that at 1 because I like it a little bit more accurate. Object selection by path only means that you can only select the object if you click on its path. Let me show you that one too. You can see now I don't get the black square until I go to the path. You have to select it by the path. Now that makes things very accurate, but it also means no matter what's in here, it's not going to select it unless you touch that path. It's up to you. Let's go ahead and turn that back off. Now here is how close you have to be before it will snap to a point. This one's nice too. Command click to select objects behind. Let me show you that one. I have here this guy's shirt. Now close your eyes. I'm going to move the shirt. There is a piece of his arm that's underneath the shirt. Let me put that back. Now I know I can get to that piece by clicking here. That's obvious. But let's say I can't get to it here, but I know it's under here. Now if I click, I get the shirt. If I command, and that would be the command key on a Mac and control key in Windows, if I command click it, I can go and get it. Now, if I click again and there were something underneath there, it would then get that next piece down. So selection is not just about, say, for example, selecting a piece. It's about stacking order. It's about what's on top of something else. And we can drill down by using the command key or the control key in Windows. Let's go back into preferences. Here, choose how you want your anchors and handles to look. Now, that's up to you. The default here, you want them bigger, you want them smaller. Highlight anchors on mouse over, I like that, so it will show you you're over an anchor. 
and show handles when multiple anchors are selected is one I don't choose. Now what that means is if you have a couple of anchors selected and they are smooth points, which means they will have these handles, they're all going to pop up. If you have a complicated shape, well, that could get kind of confusing when you think about it. So, basically, selection is the ability to choose an object or objects. Let me do that too. Let's get out of here. Obviously, if I want to choose more than one thing, click on one and hold the shift key down and click on another. Keep that up all day long. And then move or rearrange both at the same time. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to talk about grouping and things like that. But selection is just, well, it's a basic skill. It's pretty simple up front, but it can get more complicated as your objects and your drawings get more complicated too.